What's up, guys? It's your boy, the Piscean Predator. I'm back with that TPP True Crime Talk. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know the drill, though, bro. Or my lady friends. Can you smash that like and that subscribe for your boy? I appreciate it greatly. I really would. And if you smash that share, damn, man. What else could I ask for, man? What else could I ask for? But anyways, guys, we'll jump into this topic. Now, the topic for this video... Ah, <sighs> Yeah... It's that Coburger. It's that Idaho 4 uh, Brian Coburger. Yeah, it's like we can't get through a full week without somebody bringing up some more nonsense to talk about, right? And, you know, I say nonsense because, all right, now we got some evidence. We'll, we'll, we'll start with the nonsense part, right? The extra nonsense is everybody's rehashing, like, all these hearsay stories from people that have known Brian Coburger in the past, right? It's like you know, friends, ex-friends, co-workers, this and that, you know, he was a misogynistic person, and, you know, he was cocky, and, and this and that, and it's like, we already know all that stuff, we already heard all that stuff, right, and it's like, some of it's from legit sources, and then some of it's not, it just, it, it just come out of nowhere, it seems, but, um, the fact that people keep bringing that stuff up, like, it's new information, is, it's, Oh, man, it's sad, bro. It's sad, dude. It's like, like I told you guys, <clears throat> there are so many things to cover in true crime that rehashing all these, these things that we've already talked about a million times and or especially rehashing things where there's no evidence or proof that the things that you want to talk about can, and, and kick around like they're facts they're, they're just not there's no evidence on it right so it's, i don't know it's silly just watching people go over the same issues the same you know angles it, it come on man enough or even people that are still running freaking thumbnails with like the four victims or brian coverter it's like, dude, how, dude, like, literally, if there's people, there's creators every day, post something on this almost every day, and they're still running pictures on these thumbnails of these victims and this POS. It's, I don't know, man. And then, like, there's some creators that are literally running the exact, when I say this, the exact same thumbnail. They just change up the description, and, like... You see my thumbnails, dude. Like, you can go back and look at my old ones. I know how to make catchy thumbnails, right? I do. Like, back when I was making for my fishing videos or my dip videos, I know how to make good thumbnails. I chose to do the thumbnails I do in true crime because I don't feel like it's... it's. I don't feel like it's a moral thing to be throwing victims up or the perpetrators up on these thumbnails because, one, you're, you're, you're exploiting the victims, I mean, that's plain and simple. There's no argument that you're exploiting the victims to get clicks and views. And then you're glorifying the perpetrator, the murderers, by, by doing the same thing. I should I don't even like using their damn names. But, you know, how else are you going to know what I'm talking about unless I use the names? But that being said, I don't I don't like this whole reusing the pictures and, and just taking advantage of these poor victims so that you get clicks and views that shit just it, it doesn't sit with me well you know but whatever do your thing do your thing because what that does for me is it shows me what creators to mess with and what creators not to mess with you know what i mean so that being said let's jump into the second nonsense right so that first little bit was just, you know, like irritation to hearing the same crap, right? We hearing the same stuff over and over. Sorry, guys. Let me fix my, my rag up a little bit there. But, um, this shit just ain't, ain't working with me. But, um, you know, like, dude, why? Are the clicks and views really that important to you? Is, like, YouTube's literally that critical for you that you got to exploit victims and, and, you know, glorify murderers for clicks and views or to turn around and just make videos regurgitating the same stuff we already know, but claiming to have different sources on it. It just, you guys got to stop that. Just stop. Stop. And there's a few people out there that, I mean, I got mad respect for because granted, 
they do use pictures, right? But it ain't the same thumbnail every time. And it's not like, I don't know, it feels, it doesn't feel like it's done as exploitively. But also when you go watch these videos of some of these creators, they're straight up tell you. Like, I'm not rerunning and covering stuff that has already been talked about. Like, I'm not doing it just to make a video. Like, to those people, um, mad respect. Mad respect. So, like, you know, I'm going to go against what I said. I'll bring up two creators that I got respect for. Um, Pascal Show, my man, dude, he approaches every topic with such care and, 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 and just... The vibe is right, man. No disrespect. He ain't trying to like, you know, take advantage of a situation and, and make money off of somebody's downfall. And he's one of the ones, Pascal, that he will not regurgitate the same old, same old. Like, and the moment things start getting weird with the case, crazy conspiracy theories are getting thrown around, he'll back up, dude. And he won't cover. He'll just go to covering other things. And he usually does cover a lot of things too. So I appreciate that about him, man. Definitely do. Quality show. Very quality show. And then another person that I got mad respect for is Annie Elise on Tend to Life. Now, I've heard some people want to, you know, talk some mess about her because she has some, like, you know, confidential, you know, informants that she gets, you know, information from where it's... If, I, if we're to believe what she says, it's coming from law enforcement, high up law enforcement, but she can't give out her, you know, her sources because then she, she ain't going to have a source no more. And that makes sense. Um... But I wouldn't believe her as much if some of the things that she's come out and said hadn't ended up being true, especially on this Idaho 4 case. Um, she dropped info about things that at that moment when she dropped it, a lot of like big time creators were like, nah, like that sounds like crazy. How is she going to know about that? And then dude, 24 hours, dude, within 24 hours, what she was talking about came out and it was on point. It was true. So I give her mad respect too, and I don't see her beating a dead horse. You know what I mean? Like all her videos are new, up to date, current information, and she's not gonna sit there and and dive into all these crazy speculations and stuff. So she keeps it professional. So Annie Elise and Tinda Life and the Pascal Show, Pascal the Pascal Show, those two creators, hats off to you guys. Much respect, much love. You guys do an amazing job, and I'm a sub for sure. So much love, to you guys. Appreciate you. But, uh, dude, this second stuff I want to talk about with this case is this whole new information that got brought out, right? So you have a creator named Sleuthy Goosey. Um, she's pretty awesome. She she is one of those people, kind of like the docket, where they're digging. They're trying to get information, legit information through the courts. You know what I mean? And somehow she uh, managed to figure out that... Um, Bethany Funk got subpoenaed in another state and was, she was able to find that because of the fact that it wasn't being hidden like some of the other stuff that's going on with this case is being hidden and we're not finding out until maybe a couple weeks later or at all because I'm sure I'm positive there's a ton of things that we just don't know at all that being said um this subpoena right this subpoena is for Bethany Funk and it is basically um calling her a material witness, right? And so I, I just listened to about an hour live stream, you know, covering this, covering this with, you know, a creator I respect and, you know, somebody else that had brought this to light. So I listened, I listened, I listened, and there was a lot of questions being thrown around, a lot of like angles and speculations being made. But I feel like y'all are missing it, dude. I feel like you're all missing it. One, um, I do believe we're going to find out that that's defense calling for that subpoena. And I believe that because of the fact that she's trying to fight the subpoena, right? So if it was the prosecution needing her because she was key and, and sealing it all up, I don't think she'd be fighting it. Matter of fact, I don't even think that the subpoena would have to go down that way. So the fact that she's been subpoenaed and she's got a lawyer to fight the subpoena, um, that right there tells me quite a bit. Now, why would the defense want to subpoena her, right? 
crazy speculations going on all day long on this, right? Like, maybe she had something to do with it. Maybe, like, she was out with Brian Koberger, and then, like, you know, they were out in Washington driving around, and then, like, he came back, you know, in the morning and, and dropped her off. And, dude, that is the craziest I've ever heard in my life, bro. You all are on some good, good, bro, thinking about like that. Like, that is absolutely, there's no way that is what happened. There's no way. And then there's speculate, you know, people saying, you know, like, well, you know, we don't really know anything. And a lot of people have forgotten where a lot of information's come from. But if you're one of those people that stay away from the BS information and stick with the factual information and semen that in your head, you ain't going to forget it. And you're going to keep developing your idea of this case and, and where it's going to go based off of the things that you know that are facts, facts, right? So facts are that. We don't know what she knows. We don't know everything that uh, Dylan knows, right? So that being said, like, why speculate on it? Why even speculate on it, right? But what I'm going to tell you is, well, I shouldn't say why speculate. You can speculate on it. Go ahead and speculate on it. But why look at it crazy? Like, why start throwing out things like maybe she knew Koberger? Maybe she would went out with him and maybe, you know, the... No, dude, I'm going to tell you straight up. We're going to find out that the defense, Koberger, is the one subpoenaing her, right? And what they're going to do is they're, they're going to go after the investigation. This is how the defense is going to do this. They're going to try to debunk this whole claim that he did it based off the investigation. And what they're going to want to have from her is they're going to want to know what happened that morning, right? The information they're going to want to really know and what they're going to try to pull out of her is what happened that morning when it got reported, right? Because depending on who was in that house, how it all went down like that in the morning when the, the, the victims were found, and then how the police showed up, how they conducted everything, how they, they interviewed people, all that stuff, it's going to get dissected by the defense. Because what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to go after this investigation. Just like I told you with the whole Giglio part of this, where they're trying to, you know, internal investigation on some of their own people and now i heard i heard somebody saying like you know it was funny that a little bit after this internal investigation comes out now uh funk's getting subpoenaed you know, bethany's getting subpoenaed like and, and not really not really because you know <laughs> it's coincidental it's coincidental and and not only is it <laughs> coincidental it's part of the game plan right so they put in that investigation that internal investigation right goes popping right because that's part of setting up the defense right their whole defense strategy right so now they got dm dude we already know she's going to be at that trial we already know she's going to be a witness like to even speculate that she's not going to show up and there hasn't been a subpoena and it's already hasn't been set in stone that she's going to be there is, is wild to me like it's she's literally a witness in the affidavit so to think that she ain't showing up is bananas to me and then you know it's just it's so frustrating dude this whole this one this case has been pretty frustrating to watch because it's so high profile that you got to understand that that defense, they're on the damn internet. They're on Facebook. They're on YouTube. They're on Instagram. They're on anywhere there's true crime. And they're looking to see what's known about this case and where people's feelings lie on this case, right? So they're going to use that. Plus, they're going to use that at the first start of the investigation when the cops showed up that morning and anybody else that showed up that morning. And they're going to fucking try to dilute this trial so crazy that it brings up some kind of doubt for the jurors. That's all this is. That's every single one of these moves where everybody's like, it's creating these crazy conspiracy theories and speculations off of. It, it, there's a logical explanation to it all. But instead of like stepping back and just looking at it. Okay, so for instance, that, that subpoena came out right. Did I do a video right out the gate on it? Nah, dude, I went and looked at it. I went and looked at it. And then I, I kind of like thought about it and milled it around in my head. And then I went and started checking out some people that I respect on how they think. People that are actually, you know, lawyers. People that, you know, actually know what the hell is going on on a legal level. And... um yeah, man, they all, I think they're all pretty much in the same boat. It's like, this is just a strategy for defense. 
is they want to bring her in and then they're probably going to ask questions to make it seem like there's a possibility that Coco Burger could have been at that house at some point in the past for, you know, like they're going to create something to where there's doubt on whether he had been there before, because had he been there before, it would give, you know, a little bit of, you know, doubt on was he actually the one that did it. Now, was he the one that was there that night and did it? Or could have his DNA popped up from, you know, a prior visit? Like, there's all kinds of different angles the defense can use as soon as they get her in there. So, in my opinion, that subpoena is coming from defense, not prosecution. Because, like I said, if prosecution had set this up, I don't think they would even have to set it up. I think prosecution straight up would, uh, would already have her lined up. Like, so it, to me, it doesn't make any sense that this late in the game... After that whole internal investigation thing pops off, but now they're, they're going to go try to get the other surviving witness to come in, right? So they can use whatever angles they're going to use more than likely to, uh, you know, create some doubt. These, these speculations I'm hearing about, like maybe like, you know, Bethany knew Koberger or maybe hung out with him. Bro, no, 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 no. It's like I when I sat and listened to this last uh, live over an hour, it was like literally all the speculations or thoughts, you know, that were being thrown into it. And granted, the live that I was watching is somebody that I do follow and I do respect. And he did put a disclaimer out like, hey, this is speculation time. So this ain't this ain't legit. And I, I respect that because I do the same thing on my channel. You guys know, like I speculate, but you guys all know it's just off of my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. One hundred. But, you know, you can read between the lines on what I'm talking about and what makes sense. And, uh, yeah, this one, I'm going to come down and just my opinion, my hard opinion on this straight up is that's defense that subpoenaed her. And they're going to bring her in so they can create some doubt in the whole investigation, right? Because if they can create doubt from that very first minute that the police got there, or even stuff that happened before the police got there, they're going to be able to create some kind of doubt in the jurors' heads. That's what they're going to shoot for. So, like, literally, all the defense has are these crazy tactics. They have nothing. They have nothing. Nothing. 100% nothing. Because if you're already seeing these tactics happening before we even get to trial, all these weird, like, why is... What? It's because defense is struggling. Dude, they're going to start throwing every Hail Mary they can, every long shot possible, to try to create doubt. This is what it is, guys. There is, there's no mystery behind this. I know everybody's waiting for um, this information that Bethany or Dylan either had something to do with it or new stuff. And I'm telling you right now, y'all are going to be disappointed because those girls didn't know nothing. Ain't nobody knew nothing. Nothing. And then there was some talk about, like, you know, people forgetting facts. You know, like, oh, people think are, like, remembering wrong that Brian Koberger pinged in the area during the murders. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He pinged before and after the murders, right? He, he pinged in Washington, and then he pinged in the uh, in the morning. But he didn't, he didn't ping during the murders, right? So some people are speculating that, it's because he dropped somebody off and then he came back in the morning and picked somebody up. Bananas, bro. Bananas. Absolutely crazy, dude. It's like some people got way too much time on their hands and some crazy. Like, y'all watch some crazy stuff because your imagination be all over the place. Like, like this is Black Mirror or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, dude. It ain't what it is, guys. I'm telling you. It ain't what it is. And yes, he didn't ping in that location during the murders. He pinged in the location after the murders and prior to the murders. But the big thing on those pings, what you guys are all missing out on too and not thinking clearly on, is the fact that the pings put him in the area, but Bluetooth devices connecting to his device is what put him very close to that location. Think about it. How close you got to be to a house for the Bluetooth devices to pick up your phone? Pretty damn close. That's all I'm saying. Close enough to be watching people and what they're doing. That's for sure. That is for damn sure. But yeah, guys, man, it's <laughs> this case, man, this case. Like I said, this case right here, though, I'm kind of glad it's happened. I'm kind of glad it's gone down in the way it's been going down. And hopefully 
honestly, even though it's kind of irritating and I feel the need to jump up here and kind of like, you know, break things down for it. I mean, because that's what I'm going to do anyways. I hope it actually keeps happening like this because it literally is thinning out my list of content creators that I follow, right? Because it's like, for for some reason, with all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world, like the, the amount of insane crimes that are happening right now are happening at such an, a crazy speed. There's so many things happening every day that there's plenty of stuff to cover. And the fact that people are sticking to this one case and like literally being a dead horse with this case is showing me that some people actually don't really care so much about outcomes is it's more clicks and views. And then I, I've heard people like, oh, you know, well, I, I just into this, this Idaho 4 thing. And when things pop up, I'm asking questions and some things I don't feel like they make sense, even though if you really like dig deep and you've been following this, they do make sense. Um, it, it, because I want to make sure that they have the right guy. <sighs> Bro. Anybody that, okay, I'm going to say this politely. Anybody that doesn't believe that they have the right person. I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say to you. Like, you for real. Like, there's people out there for real think that there's a possibility even a slight one, that they don't have the right guy? There's people out there that believe that? <laughs> the fuck? Oh, that's crazy, guys. Can you wrap your mind around that? That um, after everything they've found, after everything that we actually know about, and think about this, we only know 5 to 10%, right? We only know 5 to 10% because law enforcement is going to hold everything back, right? So that being said, that 5 to 10% that we do know, if that ain't enough for you, bro, come on. And then let's think about this too, right? Like some of you actually are denying the DNA evidence is real. Y'all, really? There's people out there really don't believe that Koberger's DNA was found on that nice sheet. There's so many people that are so invested in this being some kind of weird, crazy conspiracy in the story that they don't believe that they found the DNA on the knife sheet. Like, they feel like somebody said something or knew something early on, right, that keyed them into Koberger, and then they just started making up things to frame him or make him the guy bro are you serious god come on man come on there's no way there's no damn way i don't know guys so between you know the regurgitation of facts that we already know about and putting in a different spin on it um the the constant like going you know <laughs> going and just posting the same damn pictures and, and videos constantly and uh, i don't know man i don't know it's crazy dude it's crazy but it is definitely helping me weed out the content creators that i do need to follow from the ones that i don't need to follow and then hopefully it's doing the same for you all too hopefully you guys are paying attention to the ones that are staying you know credible and, and moral and having some integrity in this so uh, yeah so you don't have to keep getting updates from creators that don't really matter that being said guys that's uh that's my thoughts and my opinions on this on this whole idaho for coburger situation right one there ain't nothing new besides the subpoena that's it and what's this subpoena mean Nah, she don't know anything, bro. She don't. She might have seen something in the morning when she had to, you know, wake up and leave. So yeah, speculations of her not seeing absolutely anything might be wrong. So she might have seen a dead body. She might have seen some blood. But outside of that, 
What do you want from her? The girl came home from a party, went to her room downstairs, didn't come back out until the morning time, and then all hell broke loose. So, what information could she have for prosecution? I mean, uh, nothing really. But what could she have for defense? Well, that's simple. She's going to have information of all the people that showed up. She's going to have the information of exactly what went down that morning before the cops got there. And she's going to have information of what happened when the cops got there, right? And that's the important information the defense wants to know because that's how they attack the investigation. That's what it is, guys. That's all this subpoena is. It's defense. And it's part of their tactics. Everything else, just more hearsay, just BS garbage. Just something for people to keep making videos on this so they can keep getting clicks on this. Instead of going out and looking at all these different cases that are going on. Especially little missing kid cases, dude. Because there's a lot of those. Like I was saying dude, the other day, our, uh, the true crime community, if you're paying attention, it has a it's a direct reflection of what's happening in society. So it's like all this crazy stuff you're seeing in politics and the social realm. Right? All that insane instability you're seeing. That's the reason you're seeing more crimes. More heinous crimes. Bro, you don't even want me to get into... Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do a whole other video on uh, on the correlation between this whole woke feminism movement and these women killing kids. Tell me there ain't a correlation between that. You're dead wrong. Dead wrong. Absolutely. All right, guys, but um, before I get fired up and go into a whole nother topic, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. So that's where I'm at, guys. The subpoena just is a, it's a defense thing, and there ain't nothing that's going to come from her besides information the defense might use to mess with the, the whole inf investigation. You know what I mean? So uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you don't, I'm sorry. If you do, awesome. Either way, though, whether you have a negative comment, a good comment, hit me up down in the comments and let me know. But, uh, yeah, guys, it's your boy, the Pisces Predator. Till the next video. Much love, y'all. Peace.